sweet. Okay. So um, we're just picking up again from, I, I don't know, we were chatting for like an hour already, guys. Um, oh, hi, Lauren. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm glad you can tune in, tune in like I have my own TV show or something, right? Um, oh, good. I'm glad you've been getting some good information, Laura. Um, yeah, if uh, you guys have any other questions, I came to the end, I believe, of my list of questions here. And so um, I'm up for any other ones that you want. I'm gonna pull the I'm gonna pull the curtains or the blinds just a little bit because the light's super intense on my face right now. There we go. Oh hello! I'm glad that you came in for just even a minute, Lisa. Um yeah, so we were just chatting about paint colors, tools, anything. I will um I know in the video that I did before I talked about um the kind of like palette knives and paint brushes. So we went through paint brushes already, but I use, where'd it go? Well, here, here's one old one. It's a Dick Blick palette knife. I love palette knives and I really like this shape. Um, they have endless types of shapes of palette knives, but I love this one and um, I bought it. I think this one is kind of breaking down, so I bought a second one. Um, yeah, so that's a big part of my painting. Um, I guess you could say like process. I don't paint or put paint down with my palette knife, but I um, I will mix a lot in my palette uh, with my palette knife. If I'm making a, a pile of color that needs uh, to be like evenly, uh, evenly mixed all the way through. Cause when you're mixing with a paintbrush, you um, will often get like color still stuck in your brush that hasn't gotten mixed completely in. So um, yeah, that's why I like using a palette knife. Oh, don't crash, okay, Anita? <laughs> I'm going to post... Oh, so guys, when you're talking about taking notes, I'm going to post these videos on my blog. So if the file saved correctly and everything like that, so you can go check it out. I'll see if I can get it up by tonight or tomorrow. Um, okay, so let's see. The Inky Binky says, do you experiment with other mediums such as watercolor? Um, I would say in the last year or so. I haven't really done much with other mediums. I have done quite a bit with watercolor in years past, especially when I was a student or if I had a project, like especially, well, when I was learning pattern design, I did a ton of my pattern painting in watercolors. Um, I've gotten more into acrylics, I think just because I love canvases and the physicality of like having an actual like thick canvas to hang on a wall afterwards that doesn't require framing. Um, so that's mostly why I do acrylics versus watercolors now. Also acrylics just dry so quickly and because I have a limited amount of time in my day that's usually um, the key is just getting like as much work as I can done and I'm standing there with the blow dryer blow drying my acrylics like even faster. So watercolor just obviously does not dry as snappily as acrylics do. Um, yeah, but I do, I do love a, watercolors. They do looks like the blends and the washes and just the different effects you can achieve. Like you can't do anything like that with acrylics. Um, and so I would love to play around with that more. I was actually thinking of taking the online, uh, creative bug class that Yao Cheng teaches. Um, I love her watercolors. Hers are just so spontaneous and beautiful. And she has like a series of classes, I think like three or four. So I was thinking of watching her class partially as homework for the class that I will be doing, um, hopefully in the near future. Um, and also just for my personal enjoyment, because I got like a ton of really nice watercolors that I barely have used, like the professional, um, I think they're the Windsor and Newton like professional line. I bought a whole load of them a couple years ago and then barely did anything with them. So I would love to do that. Um, yeah. Any other questions, guys? I feel like I've gotten to the end of my list and all the questions that you've typed in so far. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, so I'm hopefully, uh, when I finish up the commissions that I'm working on right now, I want to start a series 
and kind of build up a series of paintings to launch all at the same time like as a collection on my website and I did a uh a commission a while ago that had this vase so it was like a blue vase with a white pattern on it and I was thinking oh I would love to do a collection of paintings um, with the blue vase as sort of a unifying factor and then just have a bunch of like florals with blue uh, patterned vases because that will bring more of like the pattern element into my paintings um, yeah so that is my next idea for a collection. Yay! Glad that you like that idea, Laura. <laughs> cool. Any other questions, guys? How did I... How, oh, okay. So Lisa's balcony asks, how did you get your first clients? Um, let me think. So my very first uh, clients who bought paintings that were sort of custom for them were on Etsy. And it was back when I was doing uh, paintings with monograms. And so uh, they started just asking me like, oh, can you do, you know, specific colors for my baby's nursery or for my house decor and things like that. So those were the very first ones, but I wasn't really doing anything specific to get those clients, I guess, other than like posting my work on Etsy. Um, so let's see, how did I get my first clients currently? Um... I think almost entirely the sales that I have done either are from friends or family and th those actually have been a couple of my commissions recently just like family members like reaching out or a or like a friend um, who is like redecorating and they're like oh I love your work I would love to like have something specific for me so other than those Instagram has been like my main driver and honestly it's like the only advertising <laughs> advertising or like marketing I guess is a better word for it that I do really at this point is just like putting my work out consistently and then just like ever so slowly and surely just having um you know more and more people follow my work and I found and this totally makes sense that buying art is a very like personal process and it also like you have to wait for you have to wait for that right moment in your life when you're going to buy a painting like you're redecorating or you have it in your budget or you um you know it's a holiday season and you want someone to like give you a gift card or a gift certificate to a certain artist studio that you could buy something I've totally done that multiple times um and so when getting when you're getting clients it's kind of like they build up this relationship with you slowly over time by following your work and then when they're when the time is right in their life then they'll buy from you um and so I just kind of had to make peace with that idea that I'm not going to make like instant sales right off the bat. Um, it's going to be like a growing relationship that I really have to put in the work to put my images out into the world consistently so that people can get to know you, can start building a relationship with you and your brand. Um, and so that, you know, they'll see your work like over and over and over and over. And then when the time is right, they'll buy from you if that's the right thing for them. So that's kind of my thing about my thing kind of the way that I found clients is just like consistently putting work out there and then every once in a while a bigger um a bigger I guess you could say Instagram account that is linked to a blog that I've used their hashtag has reposted an image of mine that's happened like three or four times and then immediately like a couple sales will come in from that I don't think I've ever gotten commissions from that but I've gotten just like direct sales out of my shop from that before um, so that helps like if you want to consistently like use hashtags that bigger names are connected to then you know you might get that little bonus but I wouldn't depend on that that's just kind of like an added bonus um, oh I would love to do a live painting guys so I know Amira Rahim has done that that I, I tuned in once and saw her live painting and literally like she just had her her camera pointed at her canvas and like you couldn't see her face she wasn't looking at the camera she wasn't like looking at comments or anything I don't know if I'd be brave enough to just ignore everyone who was watching me <laughs> not that that's like bad but um I I could totally do that or I would like turn around and look at comments every once in a while that would be fun um 
So the Ink Binky says, have you had to deal with upset clients? If so, how did you handle it? You know what? I haven't actually dealt with any upset clients yet, probably because I have not had, you know, a ton of clients yet. Um, yeah, honestly, everybody has been so kind so far. And I know it's only a matter of time till something happens because those people are just out there. And I've read in forums, like I'm part of a couple of Facebook groups that are specifically for artists and for painters. And, um, you know, they'll post stories about crazy client, you know, interactions, um, where it just put them off of doing commissions and now they like don't do commissions anymore. So I feel like I've been really blessed so far to have such good interactions with my clients. I think the thing that has helped me at least so far um, feel really confident in doing commissions is that I have a set process. So we were talking podcasts a while ago. This is something I got from the Being Boss podcast. They were like really hammered home in some of their early episodes, like have a process, have a process you walk through with your clients already set in place. So you can say, oh, you want to buy a painting from me? You know, this is my process. Um, you know, I'm going to send something to you like a PDF that outlines my entire process, all the steps so you know exactly what to expect. You know when, you know, I'm going, you know what I'm going to deliver to you and roughly like when and what is required of you before we start. You know, it lays out all the details. So I went immediately like made my little commissions process and made my PDF. And that has been great because then I don't have to scramble and sort of feel disorganized. If somebody asks me to create something for them, I'm ready and I say, oh, well, great. I would love to make something for you. You know, here's how I do it. Here's the PDF. Please answer these questions. Um, you know, send them back to me and then we can start. And so it just helps people know what to expect and hopefully will also like offset, upset clients, you know, having miscommunications or something like that. But I know it's only a matter of time, guys, because you can only work with the public so long before you get an upset customer. Um, so Abdullah uh, asks, what is the meaning of art for you? Ooh, that's a... Um, a deep question. I would say that for me, my art isn't necessarily a, about like a deeper meaning. For me, the art that I make is just like about enjoying the process of making art, I guess I would say. It's like for my whole life, I have been super creative and making things just like the physical act of making things. Um, has been so fulfilling and rewarding and um, just life-giving for me. And so I always just, I know that about myself, like I just need to always be making things. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily matter particularly what I'm making as long as I can like be creative and make something. Um, and so like for certain phases of my life, like it might have been more crafty things like making jewelry or doing like one-off projects or sewing something. But painting is something I've always returned to just because I love the physicality of the paint. I love mixing colors. That's a big part of it for me. It's just the fun of mixing colors and trying to like match a color that I see in a photo or in real life and say like, oh, I love that. I want to draw that into my painting. Um, so that's mostly like my, um, I would say like the story behind why I create and what art means to me is just like the absolute joy of making physical things. Um, and then also like making things that we can send off into the world or I can send off into the world and it can also like make other people happy at the same time and it can enhance their home and they can live with it. And I think another thing is I, I love living with original art around me and I haven't done that for most of my life. I've mostly bought art prints. But once I started collecting original paintings, just like from friends or even like I bought one from Lily Wallace, which was an investment, but like every day it makes me super happy seeing it on the wall and having that like though knowing that it was actually like painted by someone's hand and you can see the strokes and the marks that they made and you can see that physicality that just doesn't come through with uh art prints yeah so anyway that's what makes me happy about my art like making it and um it bringing me joy in the process and then knowing that it's going to be like off to someone else's home to make them happy too okay bye melissa <laughs> mommy duty yes i know how that is 
Yeah, cool. Laura, I'm glad that um, the process w made it easy for us to work together. I made a painting for Laura earlier this year. And yeah, I think um, that just makes the process makes it so much more relaxed, I think, on both sides, because we both know what we're expecting. And uh, like what every step of the way is going to be. So I would totally recommend that in any um, like repeatable, how do you want to say it? Like a repeatable service that you're going to do for somebody. It might be commissions, it might be something else, but like have a set process that you can walk through and feel really confident in your process. Oh, thanks. Thanks, sentimental chic. <laughs> I like that word, halfifying. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, basically, it just my paintings make me happy to make. So I'm glad that they make everybody else happy too, or not everybody, but you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to answer any other questions um, about anything you want to ask. If not, I think if no other questions come in, in the next couple minutes, I think I'll start wrapping it up so I can get some painting done during the nap time too. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I think I'll wrap it up here and I'll do my best to post the videos, um, the first one and then this shorter one on my blog in the next couple days. Oh, here's another one. Okay. Um, okay. So where do you find inspiration for your color combos? Oh, so I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, I don't mind repeating though. Um, so color combos, I get a lot of inspiration from photos on Pinterest, actually, and specifically interiors. So I'll, if I have a certain, like, vibe or something I'm going for, sometimes I'll just type in, like, colorful children's room. And, oh, good! I'm glad, Lisa's balcony, that you had a fun time. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll just find photos of interiors, of sometimes other paintings that like really jump out to me. I try not to like copy what they're painting at all or even all the colors that they use, but sometimes there'll be like a color combo in another artist's work that I love or gets me thinking about something. Um, yeah, and then it's mostly just sort of a visceral reaction. If I look at two colors in an image together and just go like, yes, <laughs> like I know that's not like very well defined at all, but um, I love generally colors that are slightly more complex that aren't like necessarily straight out of the tube like a primary color it's like two or three colors mixed together so it's a little bit deeper and richer than just like a solid straight up color <laughs> i hope that ex answers your question awesome well thank you guys so much for for joining me and for staying around um yeah i'll post the videos and we'll talk very soon all right thanks guys you're welcome Bye.